Hey everyone, uh, about three days ago, Meta released an exciting new AI model called SAM2. It's the successor to SAM, which stands for Segment Anything Model. And I'm gonna show you guys why this is such a big deal in AI and computer vision, robotics, um, all of that. So the purpose of this model is right in the name. So it's the Segment Anything Model, uh, obviously two second version. Um, and what exactly does that mean? Well, as you can see in this video, uh, you can segment anything. So it actually labels every pixel and says this belongs to a ball, this belongs to a dog, this belongs to a car, so on and so forth. And this is really impressive because most AI models for computer vision are very specific, very limited. Uh, they usually need intense training, uh, custom data sets, especially if you wanna do anything non-standard. Tracking cars is uh, pretty, pretty popular now, so there's a lot of models that have that kind of built in. Uh, but if you wanna do anything really beyond that or anything unique, it becomes very hard. Um, and at that, sure, you know that, you know, that's a car, you know, there might be 10 cars in your scene. You're going to detect all those cars together if you're using general segmentation models. Uh, there are models that will do instant segmentation where you detect one at a time. Uh, but once again, even more rare. So segment anything model is big leap forward where you just click your object and it can just track it across multiple contexts, environments, and it actually tracks it across the video. So I know that, you know, the car that's driving is the same in every single frame of that video. Um, and that's, that's very useful, especially for something like robotics uh, or self-driving cars, being able to track a specific person or a specific car and determine how it's moving uh, is really useful. Um, if every single frame, you know, your your cars were swapping, your your program has no way of knowing which car was that car in the last frame, right? And there's a lot of logic and programming that you have to do after that to be able to make that work. Now, what's the big deal about SAM2 versus the original SAM model? Well, the original SAM model worked really well on images. Um, it was a really big step forward in instant segmentation as a whole. But now SAM2 actually can do this tracking across video. Uh, opening up a whole new range of possibilities. Um, it's also much faster um, than the original one. I, I saw some quotes saying it, it could do 45 FPS. Uh, there wasn't a mention of what GPU that was running on. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how, how that runs. I may do a future video uh, using this model, showing its capability, showing its API usage. So subscribe and like if you guys want to see that in the future. So I can go through the whole research paper, but we really don't need to do all of that. Um, here are some quick demos showing the usability of it. So obviously on the left, we have a soccer ball. We get the soccer shoe. Um, that's really useful uh, for athletic processing, for athletic imaging processing, basically determining how fast did they kick that soccer ball, right? With video, you now know. Soccer ball's here, shoe's here. We can track how fast those two objects are meeting each other. Uh, which opens which opens up a lot more analysis of that video. In the middle, we have cell tracking. So traditionally, cell tracking is pretty hard. Um, they have unique shapes, different morphologies, different cell types look completely different, different staining techniques. So the fact that we have a segment anything model where you don't need to train a custom data set for the type of segmentation you're doing, you can just click and it understands what that looks like and can track it is very useful. Um, and then obviously, you know, we have pouring the coffee cup into, or pouring coffee into coffee cup. And that's useful, especially for something like a, an image model, right? So being able to track these objects and produce like a textual description of what it sees and where these objects are can be really helpful to assist uh, the already impressive large language models. And there's GPT-4 vision, which can run on images, but it's slow and isn't really, isn't really designed to run at high frame rates like this is. Um, once again, another kind of athletic thing where you can track the ping pong ball, you can track the person. Uh, it's a very useful for doing interesting, interesting analysis of athletic videos. Uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a demo. Uh, so I already have this demo pulled up, uh, but you just go to sam2.metademolab.com and you can just do this demo. Uh, you can change the video to whatever you want. They have a bunch of examples. Uh, I particularly like this video because it kind of highlights autonomous driving um, where, you know, let's, let, let's see, just click on an, an object in the video to start. So there we go. So now we're tracking our first object and you see it's unique, object one now. 
we can add another one. Let's let's do that card. Now we can add one more. Let's do the car in the front. So now we have three objects track, three individual cars, just on this one frame. All we did was click, right? Now we click track objects. It will track that for the rest of the video and it will keep consistency on uh, those tracked objects. Like you see, it knows that that is the orange car up front, knows this is the blue car. And there's no, there's no switching back and forth. So this is super useful, especially if combined with like a depth camera, where you actually get depth information about every single pixel as well. You can actually estimate the 3D position of each of these cars live in the scene, um, which allows you to do essentially turns real life into a video game, right? It brings everything into the virtual world, which allows you to do a lot more from a programming standpoint to determine really what's going on. Um, and that's, that's useful for everything from robotics to autonomous driving, um, tracking things like crops, plant growth, uh, really all of that. So I was saying how you can integrate ChatGPT with this, right? So there's a trick you can do with ChatGPT where you can overlay a numbered grid over an image and you can say, hey, tell me every number that has a red car, right? Or that is on top of a red car, right? For example, this one in the middle of the frame. So you can pick a frame, right? And you can tell ChatGPT, hey, select all these grid points. You can then take those points, feed it into the segment anything model. And all of a sudden you have super fast live tracking of that object that you told ChatGPT to click on. Um, and that can run much faster than, you know, normal ChatGPT vision, which has some high latency associated with it. Um, so that essentially allows you to fully prompt this model to just track anything. So right now you click on it, which is fine, but it still requires manual intervention. By using ChatGPT, you can even automate that selection process and just say, hey, watch out for any cars, or if you see a car, track it, right? And then every single frame that's being tracked and you have all that position and that opens up a whole range of possibilities for autonomous robotics. This is just a brief video. I was just providing some background on these segment anything models and uh, you know, I'm just really excited about these models, especially to integrate in some of uh, my robotics projects. Uh, but if you guys want to see a video on integrating segment anything model with ChatGPT, which I haven't seen anybody do yet, uh, please like and subscribe and comment down below if that's something you want to see. And I can work on a, a demo um, showing the integration of these two and kind of how powerful that can be. So thank you guys for watching uh, and I'll see you next time.